All right, I'm gonna start off by playing Bull Them Cabbage Down for you. <laughs> September 1st, 2017. A lot seems to have gone on since the last time I talked to y'all, and I've been meaning to come on a little bit sooner. But what I want to talk to you today about is I want to talk to you about Charlottesville and white nationalism, what the strategy is, what what they're trying to do. And in my opinion, they're trying to start a race war, which is the exact same thing that the Klan wanted to do in the 60s was to start a race war. And the way that they're trying to do this is by using a vanguard, which is a Leninist strategy, an intellectual, educated, professional, revolutionary class of white nationalists in order to recruit the white working class into their ranks. And what they're um, betting on is that the last 40-odd years of um, things getting worse for the white working class that they can recruit them into a race-based social movement to start a race war. The problem is is that the white working class has not um, seen losses because of the white working class's race. They've not seen losses because of race. They've not seen losses because they're white or because we are white. They've seen losses because of the demonization of redneck culture and because of the destruction of the material basis for redneck culture. And you have to understand there's a difference between culture and race. Race is a social position. It is a position in a hierarchy. A white person is higher in the hierarchy than a black person. But an ethnicity or a culture also has a hierarchy and if you have a working class culture like rednecks or Irish or any other kind of working class culture, then you're going to be lower in the hierarchy than other forms of white cultures, uh, such as you know bourgeois culture or or anything like that. So there's this 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 purposeful misapprehension, which the educated white nationalists understand. They understand there's a difference between race and culture, but they just say white is just an uh, is just as a legitimate group as any other type of grouping. They don't actually, um, you know, offer any sort of real justification for whiteness being identification. And to understand this, we must look back into the history of whiteness to understand where whiteness came from. In the 1560s, um, Irish and African, these were ethnicities or cultures, Irish and African ethnicities were both indentured servants on plantations in Virginia, and they lived in very difficult situations. And 
uh, in the 1560s because of Bacon's Rebellion in which Africans and Irish joined together to attempt to overthrow the plantation owners. The plantation owners decided, well, we got to figure out a way to make sure this never happens again. And the way that they did that was they invented white and black. And they said that the Irish were white, like the plantation owners, and they gave the white people different types of privileges. And then they said that the Africans were black and they invented permanent slavery, that they permanent inheritable slavery that black pe that Africans who became black people were forced into. So this is the same way that it is today. Um, white working class people get a few very basic privileges for being white, such as, um, you know, you're not going to get beat up by the cops, you're not going to get followed around um, in, a, in a grocery store or a convenience store, and you're going to get these very, very basic privileges, and white people jump at these privileges and identify as white because of it. Well, if they looked at their class cultural interests, the interest of the class culture of rednecks is not that different from the class culture of African Americans. In that, um, you know, in the South we eat very similar food, we have similar accents, we use similar idioms, but we can't ever get together because of this invention of whiteness that makes sure that we identify with the powerful instead of the not powerful. So let's, so the rednecks who are being pulled in, us rednecks who are being pulled into this white nationalist narrative, we need to think critically about what we're really going to get out of this. And I can guarantee you we'll get a lot more out of, out of banding together with people of color who are working class like us, which has happened in the history of the South, and we have gotten more out of it. I can guarantee you that we get more out of that than we will ever get by being servants to, to the white bourgeoisie, which is what we would end up being in an all-white nation. So this is Zach Henson uh, signing off November 9th, 2017, East Lake, Alabama. Peace, y'all.